but it, it's great to be at the, the summit again today. I think this is our third time presenting data ban at the Airflow Summit. So time really, really flies, but excited to, uh, to present again today. What I'm going to be walking through is how to achieve data pipeline reliability using our product data band and excited to, to share what we have and, and uh, gather some questions from, from the group if there's interest in diving into any particular areas. I'm going to start with some background slides about our product and how our solution works, how we think about the problem of pipeline reliability. And then we'll walk into an actual quick demo of the product where we can see some of the ways that we're helping teams address this issue and, and uh, level up their, their data ops. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll kick off here on, on the slides. So we always like to define our terms. So what do we mean by data reliability? What is it that we're really talking about today? Well, we think a lot about this at, at DataBand. It's an evolving concept, but I think there's a, a great definition out there which states that data pipeline reliability means data is being delivered to its downstream consumers in ways that are complete, accurate, and timely. We see data pipeline reliability as the foundation for building data quality and trust within the organization across the folks that need to use data to get their work done. This might be the analytics organization, it could be the data science organization, it could be data product, and in most companies, it's a mixture of all three. But reliability, the concept of reliability, really comes from the software domain. And just like if you're building a software application and shipping that out to market, you have a team of DevOps and SREs that make sure that that system is reliable. Those kinds of best practices filter through to the engineers and the application developers that build the software. We really want to carry that same concept over to the data domain and make sure that the folks building data applications are, are doing this in a way that's reliable, measurable, and where folks in engineering can meet their data SLAs. Where we focus in data band, our, our core user group, because there's a lot of different stakeholders involved in this problem at the end of the day, where we really focus is on the data platform and engineering team. These are the folks that are usually responsible for two different domains within the data organization. One is managing and running the services that are used to run an org's data pipelines. This is services, of course, like Airflow. And also, we usually find these teams responsible for the ingestion of raw data and getting it into some level of prepared state for the downstream users, folks in, analysts, uh, folks in the analytics org, data science org, or product org. And this, this is really what's downstream to the data engineering camp, right? It's the analyst team who is responsible for building analytics and dashboards, the science organization who are responsible for machine learning and predictive analytics, and then product who will take data and often in some way package that for external use by uh, customers of the business. And we see that as a, a growing demographic actually within the data team. The reason that we focus on data engineering and data platform is because they are upstream to those, those different stakeholders. And we know for sure if engineering and data platform is not working properly, nobody else does, right? If, if the services aren't running properly, if raw data isn't coming in as expected, then everyone else is going to be impacted by that because most of the data that an org works with is usually coming through that, that core team. So we want to make sure that they are working effectively, that they're delivering good and reliable data to the rest of the business. How DataBand does that is by providing our solution, which is a data monitoring and incident response system, which helps data engineering teams ensure that reliable data is being delivered to those downstream stakeholders that we talked about. So how we want to measure the improvements that DataBand brings is by helping data engineers improve the time to detection of issues, improve the time to resolution of problems, cut down on the, the cycles of debugging, and ultimately improve the actual data product in some measurable way. Maybe that's more accurate analytics. Maybe it's less bugs or tickets being raised by the analyst or science org. Could be more performant machine learning models. But having that downstream effect is really what we're, what we're aiming for. There's four main components to how DataBand's application works. The first area of our product is how we collect metadata, right? So this is the, the various integrations that we provide to tie into services like Airflow or Snowflake or DBT, uh, Pandas or Databricks, and collect information 
that helps us inform whether or not a pipeline is working in a reliable way. Once we have all this metadata captured within our system, the next step is we begin building baselines, essentially trying to determine what normal looks like. So if we're monitoring a number of processes, let's say there's one pipeline in the vast number of pipelines that an organization runs, this pipeline typically ingests, let's say, a thousand records of data, and it runs for 10 minutes at a time, and it delivers data into some database, uh, database location within Snowflake, some table, will profile that, that, uh, that behavior of the pipeline. And if we see that the pipeline is deviating in some meaningful way from that baseline, let's say instead of a thousand records, one day it pulls in a million records. And instead of running for 10 minutes, we see that it's continuing to run after 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. That's when we start to raise alarm bells within our system. And that's where incident response really kicks in. So this is how we alert our users based on those big deviances from our baselines or based on rules that our users embed into the system according to their own logic that describes some bad event or incident that occurs within their system. So maybe a user knows for sure that no less than 999 records should be pulled in by that pipeline. And if that threshold is breached, you should definitively get an alert that's sent to X, Y, and Z teams, right? The last and, and final step to our product is resolving through automation. So whether that's automation that you build up within your pipelines that make them more data aware based on the issues that we're picking up or automation that's based in your remediation system like PagerDuty, your incident response system that's already worked with within your organization, we wanna have uh, routes or paths within our product that help to close issues if they come up and ideally automate certain problems away if it's possible to do so. So four stages to our product, we collect information, we profile that information, we alert on it, and then we help in the resolution after the fact. There's two really important categories of information that we are picking up within DataBand that helps inform whether or not an incident has occurred within your environment. So when you look at that body of metadata that we're extracting, there's certain kinds of information that we're looking at that inform our incident detection system or alerting system. The two buckets are related to process quality events, which relate to how your pipelines are running, like are your pipelines themselves healthy? The second category of information is data quality information. So giving some examples within those different buckets, if we're looking at process quality issues, this might be um, problems like the execution of your pipelines. Are pipelines running at all, right? Do you have failure states across really important DAGs or are, are pipelines running as expected and data is being, uh, data's being read and written to locations as expected? The next level up would be looking at issues like latency, are pipelines running on time or are they delayed in how they execute? And then we go to levels higher, like understanding the performance of a, of a process. Is it consuming the expected level of resources? So that first category being process quality issues. The second category of information that we look at within DataBand is more directly related to data quality concerns. This is information like, is data fresh? Is it arriving at locations where it's expected on time? Is the structure of the data intact and are schemas complete or are those changing or drifting? And then lastly, the content of the data, if you looked inside your data sets and you do profiling or, or certain record level validations, is the content of the data uh, conforming with rules that you have about your business or uh, just histories of how you expect this data to come in? So these are the two categories of information that we collect and as we go through the demo, I'll call back to some of these examples to, to show how they relate to the, the monitoring within the actual product. The reason that we monitor these two buckets is because these are the two primary areas of concern for most data platform and engineering teams. Really, if you look at process quality control and data quality control, this is at the end of the day, what's going to inform your SLA within the data platform or engineering team. Data, data engineers need to know that Pipelines are running on time, that they're going to deliver data within expected uh, timeframes. And you need to know that from the run times that, that we collect about uh, pipelines. You also need to know that states are what you expect and that you have more you know, green than red um, within your, your DAGs. 
So process quality is really important uh, concern for data engineers to make sure that pipelines are just running as expected. And then data quality being the second level of concern that data is passing through those pipelines as expected. You could have perfect process quality, horrible data quality. You could have bad data quality and perfect process quality if there's problems coming directly from the data source. So it's really important to have these two concerns in mind when you create the SLAs that, that you form with um, your downstream stakeholders with your business. So I think with that, I'll, I'll transition into the actual product itself, and maybe we'll walk through some flows of incidents that we've discov discovered within DataBand and describe how these two types of monitoring fit together. So I'll start off within DataBand's alerting system. So what we're seeing here is our alert page in the product. This is basically an inventory of all recent events that have happened within our demo environment, of course. Now, just looking at the kinds of alerts that have been recently raised, you can see those different buckets of concern being addressed within the product, the process quality issues and the data quality issues. So examples of process quality issues that I see here right away would be things like runs failing, right? Those critical issues around run failure states, definitely a process quality issue, missing data, maybe somewhere in between. Um, and then as we scroll down, we can actually see a little bit more examples of just data quality concerns. Like I have an anomaly related to distinct counts within some column of my data set. I have a null value threshold that it looks like it's been crossed in another column of my data set. So just some examples of, of different types of alerts that we might throw that fall into those different categories of concern to the engineering team. Now, within our, our demo here, we actually have a few uh, different pipelines that we run where uh, alerts have been raised. Uh, two of those pipelines tend to be particularly problematic. One of them is service 311 get data, and another one is service 311 close request, two pipelines that we're running within this system. Now, the data that's being pulled here, just as we go a bit deeper in, it's coming from this New York City 311 API. I know we have some folks from New York from the, uh, the, the New York Times meetup now. If you're familiar with the 311 service in New York, this is basically lower severity issues that have been submitted into um, uh, New York City uh, public service to be closed. These are things like noise complaints right, across different boroughs. So that's, that's the, the type of data that we're working with. Now, there's a couple incidents here that I want to take a, a deeper look into to, to showcase some of the different ways that we help teams address reliability problems. The uh, recent alert that I, I'll start at is this failure state. We know that's a critical one coming from my service 311 get data pipeline. So I know that's an ingestion pipeline, but we'll take a look further to uh, uh, see some more detail. Now, the first page that I'll jump into as I'm trying to understand this alert is our uh, uh, incident page or our alert payload view. We call this the payload. This is the summary information around an alert that will get sent out by data band, of course, internally within the product if, if this event occurs, but also externally to services like Slack or PagerDuty or maybe other routes or receivers that you have within your business. Now, what, what is contained in the payload or the summary here is a lot of information that helps me understand, first of all, what's the cause of some notification or incident? and what's the impact of that, right? First of all, what I know is that the, pi the pipeline that's affected by this is service 311 get data. I know what time the alert was triggered around 6 a.m. this morning, and I can even dive into, which I'll do in a sec, the exact run of the airflow DAG in this case that triggered the notification. We also provide a bit of summary of who is going to be impacted by this issue, meaning the different data sets that this pipeline works with and maybe some downstream pipelines that are related to it. And then we also provide a clean print parsed out of the error message if there is one associated with a, an issue like this. So in this case, we have a pretty simple problem. We just have an expired token that looks like is causing my pipeline to fail when we try to do a write into our data warehouse, you can see here. So we'll, we'll take a deeper look in that in a second. First though, I wanna check out some more information about the impact of this issue, right? So who's going to be affected by this problem? And what we can do there is take a look at our lineage view to understand what are the different pipelines and data sets that are related to this notification, right? So to begin with, we can see that there's an upstream pipeline or the, the beginning pipeline, service 311 get data, where the actual event occurred, right? We have this right to the data warehouse task within the pipeline that had that failure state in it, right? 
Downstream, it looks like I have another pipeline, closed requests, which is going to read data from the locations that are being written by service 311 get data and also take in some data from another table here. It looks like uh, Redshift incremental load. And then, of course, the, the original data set starting is my 311 API, right? So to, to dive in a little deeper here, um, I'm going to take a look at the actual error that was thrown by this, this problem uh, within my write to data warehouse task. And I'm going to jump into that uh, specific execution of the pipeline to get a little more context in. So first of all, we can see here the actual DAG. And you can see my, my Airflow logos, of course, seeing that this is a, a pipeline being triggered by our Airflow environment. Um, and then within that. The, the graph here, we can see that that write to DW task is the one that actually failed. And we have that same error log showing here within the, the task to understand what the actual event was. Generally, the next question that we want to know is, OK, we understand that uh, there is an error here. There was a failure to, to actually run this process. But how is it affecting my data? Is the data coming through at all? Is it uh, entirely missing? And how should I communicate this problem downstream to maybe analysts or scientists that are concerned, right? So the next area that we'll dive into is our affected data sets area, which are telling us what are the expected operations or the actual operations that have occurred over the course of running this pipeline, right? So what we see here is the pipeline, first of all, is effectively taking in data from our source location, that 311 API. We can actually see that here in that first step, get hourly data. Uh, the data is being read in as expected from the source. Next up, though, we see as the writes are coming through in this pipeline, it's just a simple ingestion. So we're taking data from the API. We're supposed to be writing it into S3 and then reading it into Redshift. Here we can see that data is not effectively passing through in its eventual travel because of that failure state that we have in the pipeline. Right. So we have data effectively coming in from the source then um, not being successfully read up from the, uh, the lake and not successfully being written into the warehouse. And it looks like that's coming from that initial token issue. The good sign here is we do have data coming into the environment. So it looks like a, a quick fix in this case would be exchanging out those tokens and refreshing them so we have the right uh, access into the warehouse level to do our write and maybe just doing a quick backfill to get the, the new data that came in from the source and pushing that into our Redshift location. That typically, though, is not the, the final level of check that we want to do on data to make sure that it's reliable. What we've seen so far, though, is understanding those basic levels of process quality and the initial structure of the data. Is it coming as, in as expected? And you can see here, we do have that data initially coming in from the source that we expect. But the next level of concern that we have is what's the content of this data? Okay, so we know the data was effectively pulled in from the source, but is it coming in um, with the uh, expected content, right? So what we can do then is just drill into this data set and understand within the, the uh, actual records of data, does it conform to histories? Is it consistent? And does it break any rules that we may have set up here? Now, Working with this API a lot, we know of one typical problem that, that happens a lot here, uh, working with 311 data uh, from this API in New York is typically, um, or kind of frequently, they'll send us um, uh, uncategorized or uh, problematic information related to the actual borough categories that 311 requests come in. So for anyone that lives in New York, you know that there are five boroughs. Um, and uh, sometimes in this data set, uh, the API will toss in a six borough for us, which sometimes throws off the data. And you can see here, looking at this distinct count across um, our borough column, you do see in, in somewhat previous history, we had an, an anomaly, which was triggered in our process, uh, in our, our platform, based on a erroneous you know, six borough that was brought into the New York City um, data set. Okay? So just an example of some deeper data quality checking that one may want to do within the data sets that they are working with. Just keeping an eye on time, I think um, it's a, a good point to, to pause and maybe check if there are any questions from the, the group here. Um, there is a, a good amount more depth within the product, but um, I think hopefully this provides a bit of summary information of the kinds of reliability checks that we're doing. So one category there would be helping folks understand that their processes is run, are running as expected, 
measuring things like states and durations of pipelines, and the other area being um, items like the content of data sets, the completeness, completeness of data sets like we saw in that program.